Hello. Today's tutorial is about modeling daylight using Andrew Marsh's dynamic daylighting app. So first you need to go to andrewmarsh.com and then software, you click on launch app and you find yourself in this page here. This uh, app is useful to look at the amount of daylight in a very simple rectangular room. Um, it doesn't model roof lights and it doesn't model complex geometrical uh, shapes. So the first thing you might want to do is to set up the uh, location. So say we're somewhere in London. Um, and then um, you perhaps would want to set the orientation correctly. So this will be useful if you use the uh, more advanced sunlight models, uh, which we're going to look at in a separate tutorial. So it's very, very easy to change the dimensions of the room using these arrows here. Or you can also use one of the options in the menu, model settings, um, which allow you to change the size of the room using the numbers there or just typing in a number. You can also change the room height and the thickness of the walls and of the ceiling. And you can also look at the ceiling in the model, although we're going to remove that because we want to see uh, the daylight modeling inside the room. Another important factor that you can set up here is the reflectance of the walls, which is how much light is reflected by walls, uh, but also of the ceiling and of the floor. So this would be a mid-gray, 0.6 here. Um, the ceiling reflectance is 0.7, which is uh, perhaps a, a white, a not very reflective white, so maybe put it a bit higher for a lighter color. And the floor is a sort of slightly darker gray color at 0.4. Remember that you cannot set the reflectances in the red areas here because these are not very realistic color. Reflectance of one uh, doesn't exist in real life. Uh, now we're going to look at the windows. It's very easy to erase windows by just clicking on one window and then selecting, um, uh, pressing the key delete, delete. But you can also do the same thing by just simply um, clicking on the menu daylight model and removing the selection. So we're going to make this window bigger here. This is on the south facade. And remove this window here. So as you can see, there's more daylight on the side where the window is. You can refine um, the windows by, uh, first of all, changing the frame, the, the thickness. So if you have a very thick frame, obviously, you're going to get a bit less daylight. And the depth of the thickness can be changed as well. You can change the frame color. Um, and you can also increase the number of dividers or reduce the number of dividers. Now, as you can see, um, the way this works means that all of the windows are being changed at the same time. So if I change the width of the panes, it changes in both of the windows at the same time. You can also change the divide the depth here. Transmittance is very important aspect of uh, the modeling because it gives how much light goes through the window. It's effectively how transparent the windows are. Um, and depending on the kind of window you're going to have, this transmittance is going to change. So it's a ratio of solar radiation transmitted through the glass. A single pane of glass would have a transmittance of perhaps 0.9. Um, but we don't use single pl panes of glass any longer. Um, so a clear double glazing would be 0.8. A low E double glazing, which is a bit more um, energy efficient, it's got better U value, would have a transmittance of 0.75. And a glazing which is spectrally selective and has 
a solar coating to prevent solar gains, as well as you know, double glazing and low E, would have a slightly lower glass transmittance of around 0.7. Now, if we're going to use triple glazing, which has got a low E as well, um, you're going to be around the 0.5 mark here. And reflective glazing, mirror glazing, would have a transmittance which might be very small, um, down to 0.18 here. And you can see with this very reflective glazing, you don't get much daylight inside the room. So let's put the transmittance back at 0.7. The ground albedo is how much light is effectively reflected by the, the ground. So it's the proportion of incident light that's reflected. In a city, 0.2 would be a reasonable assumption. Now, if you have a very um, a forest with much more vegetation, the value of the albedo would be a little bit lower, may, uh, lower maybe down to 0.1. And in an area where there's a lot of snow, the albedo would increase to perhaps 0.6. So it's important to consider this. It has a very limited impact, however. The the models give you instantaneous uh, value of daylight factor. The daylight factor is the proportion of light inside in relation to the horizontal plane outside. So here we have an average of uh, 7.61, which means that we have 7.61% 7, 7 of the light inside compared to the outside. This is calculated with a CIE overcast sky. So this is a model, or a model of di luminance distribution of the sky. Uh, it's a standard distribution, which is idealized. It's a model. And in this model, the luminance, the amount of light coming from the sky, the luminance is similar whatever orientation we're looking at, whether it's north, west, south, or east. However, the amount of luminance increases with the altitude in the sky. So we have a lot less light coming from the horizon, which is the black line around here, than we have at the top of the sky, um, where the, the light is increasing, therefore it's represented in red. So this is uh, the standard sky that would be used to do a daylight calculation. But as you can see, there is no change in the amount of light depending on the orientation. And therefore, the sun is not represented in this model. In order to do a calculation using the sun, uh, we'll have to download a climate file, which we'll do in another tutorial. So here we can see there's a lot more light um, on this side of the, of the room. Um, it's important to consider that there might be obstructions. So um, the, the app has some options to increase, you know, to add obstructions. So here we could have an obstruction. Let's imagine this obstruction, um, perhaps a building, is right in front of this window. And you can see how this impacts the amount of light coming through this window. Another thing you could consider is adding shades, uh, such as, for example, a horizontal shade, an overhang, onto the window. So this is quite easy to do. And you can change the location of this shade and its size very simply here. And you can see this also changes the amount of light which is available behind this window. Now, in terms of what target you should be looking at here, it is good practice to get daylight around 4 or even better, 
2% tends to be the strict minimum for, for example, an office. But the amount of daylight may vary, that, that you're seeking, may vary depending on the type of room you're designing. And certainly, we'd want quite a lot of light, for example, in a classroom, uh, where there's young uh, people working. So there we'd want to have perhaps 4% as a strict minimum. Okay, so I hope this was a useful tutorial and I'd, I'll upload another one uh, to show you the more advanced features of this little app.